Hello, this is Brian. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about an extremely mysterious case, which I already discussed before. It's the Madeline McCain case, which is still a big deal around the world. They've spent a lot of money trying to find her, about $20 million. But a lot of people and investigators are suspicious of her parents and think they might be hiding some major points about the case, covering up the original truth. If you want to know about the traditional proceeding on this case in detail, you can check out this video which I made some days ago. But that's not enough. That's not sufficient. It's a strong suspicion that the real truth has not been revealed yet, which might be much more mind-bending and sinister than we ever thought. So, in this video, I'll look at the case from a different perspective. Let me provide a more straightforward version. To give you a head start, Jerry McCann and Kate Healy met each other in 1993 in Glasgow while studying medicine. They got married in 1998 and had three children, Madeline in 2003 and twins Sean and Amelia in 2005. Jerry specialized in cardiology and did research in experimental medicine, while Kate worked as a general practitioner with an interest in gynecology and anesthetics. During a vacation in Portugal with friends, all of whom were doctors they had met through work, a tragic incident occurred. On the night of May 3rd, while dining about 100 yards from their villa, Madeline disappeared from her room. The only physical clue was an open window, which the McCanns claimed they closed earlier. The media became highly involved in the case, and in May 2023, Portuguese police began searching an area 30 miles from the crime scene. The friends of the McCanns initiated a frantic search, and the Ocean Club manager mobilized the staff. Police joined two hours later, initially focusing on a possible wandering child. Unfortunately, the investigation faced challenges as the apartment wasn't properly sealed off, leading to the tampering of evidence and the loss of crucial clues. At first, the police in Portugal didn't think it was a crime. They were more focused on finding the missing girl. The police didn't set up roadblocks until six and a half hours later. The media turned against the McCanns when they heard the parents weren't with their children. People judged them and said they were at least guilty of neglect as they left their children in the hotel room while dining out. But this backlash was nothing compared to what happened just four months later. The McCanns were considered prime suspects because their daughter's blood was found in their rental car. There was a lot of speculation and it felt like the public was completely against them. All the doors started closing for them, and the UK government and authorities also stepped back. People began to doubt them, and the McCanns felt really alone in this battle. To address the negative portrayal of the McCanns in the Portuguese media, they were not allowed to defend themselves publicly due to legal constraints. The media coverage in Portugal was filled with misinformation, lies, and accusations against them. And discussing details of the investigation risked violating judicial secrecy. The McCann's decision to leave a window open from the start raised suspicions among the Portuguese police. Forensics investigator Professor Dave Barclay, with 45 years of experience, visited Praia da Luz in 2007 to examine the case. He suggested that the open window could have a reasonable explanation. It might have been opened from the inside by a burglar who used it as an exit after entering through another door. It's a common practice for burglars, especially in higher class break-ins, to create an escape route by opening a back door. If it wasn't a burglar, then it would indicate that none but Madeline's parents were involved. Detective Goncalo Amaral 
was leading the investigation back then. It was him who brought in two sniffer dogs named Eddie and Kayla from the UK and supposedly detected traces of Madeline's DNA in a rental car used by the McCanns weeks after her disappearance. Amaral believed they had hidden Madeline's body at the beach and then transported it to a more remote location using the rental car. The detective used sniffer dogs to smell around the McCann's home. He said they found signs that a dead body had been there and some invisible body fluids. But the stuff they found near the sofa couldn't be proven to be human blood or Madeline's. Some people doubt the reliability of these dogs because they react to any decaying stuff, whether it's from humans, animals, badgers, or even meat. After three months of leading the investigation, Detective Goncalo Amaral was taken off the case. Other investigators then looked into different ideas, like the chance that Madeline was taken by a child trafficking group in a well-planned operation. One of the friends of the McCann family claimed to have seen a man carrying a child close to the apartment block 45 minutes before Madeline was reported missing. At that time, Jerry McCann was outside talking to a friend. Strangely, neither Jerry nor his friend noticed the passing stranger with the child. It's quite hard to believe, but for the sake of discussion, let's assume it happened. Initially, the McCanns were suspicious of this person, thinking he might be the one who took their child. However, the police later identified the man as a tourist carrying his own daughter back from the resort. Another incident was that an Irish family saw a man carrying a small child towards the beach around 10 p.m., just minutes before Kate realized Madeline was missing. The entire Irish family claimed to have seen this, the McCanns refused to acknowledge the possibility that this person could be the abductor. Alternatively, some argue that these incidences might be part of covered-up theories. In her book, Kate McCann wrote, Well, it could be the guy who abducted Madeline, but only if it was the same person that Jane Tanner saw. Essentially, Kate suggests that the man Jane Tanner saw may have hidden somewhere briefly, then moved towards the beach. Considering all these, a well-known American criminal profiler named Pat Brown, who strongly criticized the search efforts for the missing British girl, Madeline McCann, believes that it's unlikely she was kidnapped, and not only that, but he also questions the additional funding provided to Scotland Yard, which has spent over $18 million on the search. According to Brown, the evidence points more towards an accident happening in the McCann's hotel room, with the body later removed simply to hide it. The Portuguese police grew suspicious, especially when Kate and Jerry McCann refused to answer 49 crucial questions about Madeline's disappearance, leading to the case being closed due to insufficient evidence, particularly Kate's lack of proactive searching and focus on other activities raises suspicions about what they might be hiding. Brown is unhappy with how Scotland Yard looked into the case. She thinks they made a mistake by assuming someone kidnapped Madeline right from the beginning, instead of keeping an open mind. Brown also points out that they didn't thoroughly check all the evidence. According to Brown, there's no proof, like signs or physical evidence that supports the idea of Madeline being kidnapped. Scotland Yard spent six years on the case, but they didn't find anything important because there wasn't enough evidence. On the other hand, some people think Madeline might have died in the apartment. This idea comes from things like a sniffer dog that can find dead bodies and blood in the apartment as well. Maybe she died there. Or worse, she was killed there, and after that, her parents moved her body somewhere else to hide using the car. But the McCanns have not been found guilty or brought to trial because there is no solid evidence or confession yet. Though, Many people still consider the McCanns as the prime suspects. 
Some believe that Madeline's death may have resulted from a fall in the Holiday apartment, causing a fatal head injury or broken neck. However, the McCanns might have covered this up due to concerns about their successful careers and family. A better approach to understanding the case involves revisiting the initial stages of the investigation. There is also a seemingly minor detail that could point to a significant issue. The McCanns claim that the last photo of Madeline, taken on May 3, 2007, depicts the hours before she was snatched. However, evidence suggests it likely shows the first day of their holiday on April 28th or April 29th. If you look at Jerry McCann's skin color on May 4th and May 18th, it raises natural doubts about the authenticity of the final photo. If it's a fake, it could be an attempt to portray a happy family, hinting at potential issues if no later joyful pictures exist. Portuguese authorities express concerns about family dynamics, sleeping habits, child behavior, and the possibility of sedation. Looking at Jerry's clothing at the Ocean Club pool and on the bus, differences in color and sleeve length are noticeable. Although Madeline and Emily change clothes after their flight, the notable aspect is the pinkish skin tone of all three individuals in the photo. Taken on the sixth day of their vacation, the image doesn't show the expected tan from days spent in the Algarve. The typical experience of sunburn contradicts the seemingly sunburn-free appearance of the McCants. Their look suggests if it's their first day in Praia de Luz, which conflicts with their stated arrival on April 28th. Above all, why did it take weeks for the McCants to share their last photo of Madeline? On August 2, 2007, investigators searched the McCann's new villa using dogs trained to detect cadavers and blood. In a video at 641, investigators found a framed photo in the McCann's bedroom labeled as the last photo of Madeline, but it showed only half of it. The photo, presented to the public as the final image of the abducted daughter, appeared to be edited with noticeable cropping issues when trying to replicate the missing space. Additionally, there was an unidentified black and white line between Amelie's arm and her body in the photo. If the picture was indeed manipulated, it raises the question, why would the McCanns do this? According to the Portuguese police, Madeline's death has been covered up by a fake kidnapping case. They criticized the UK's investigation for not looking at the people around Madeline first and were worried that the parents weren't being checked thoroughly. They doubted the fair play of Operation Grange, saying that not looking into the parents made the investigation less trustworthy. Also, it's important to note that in the area where Madeline went missing, there were several cases of break-ins and even assaults on young girls between 2004 and 2010. Before Madeline disappeared, there was a rise in robberies, and there were two unsolved burglaries in the same place where the McCanns were staying. Didn't the family know about any of these before planning their trip? If they knew, why did they pick this place? The police are looking into a lead involving an employee. And some people think there are safety concerns at the Ocean Club. There's a theory that the British Secret Service, MI5, helped hide Madeline's body. But this is not widely accepted. Detective Goncalo Amaral believes in this theory and wrote about it in a book called The Truth of the Lie, even though the British government denies any cover-up involvement. What are your thoughts on the evidence presented? Do you believe there's a cover-up? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching, guys. This was Brian with you. Don't miss out on any of the upcoming shocking tales. Hit that subscribe button now.